WACT News begins now with breaking news. And that breaking news is at Wilmington International Airport, where authorities have detained a driver after he crashed his car into one of the terminal entrances. A scary situation for passengers and workers at ILM. The man drove the car through the front entrance of the terminal, and he's in the custody of authorities right now. WECT's Daniela Hankey is live at the airport. Now, Daniela, do we know if investigators have filed any charges against this guy? And good morning, everyone. I'm John Evans in the WECT newsroom with this live update on the conditions across southeastern North Carolina from Hurricane Ian. We have uh, several things we're going to tell you about. Uh, we're going to go into the First Alert Weather Center with Gabe Ross in a moment. We'll hear from WECT's Lauren Schuster. She is in Carolina Beach. We'll give you an update on some power outages, some flights out of Wilmington International. But first, let's go into the studio with uh, Gabe Ross. Now, Gabe, we're about 10-15 uh, minutes away from getting new coordinates on this storm, but as we uh, sit here this morning, give us an idea of what Hurricane Ian is sending our way. John, there's been a lot of scrutiny on the Board of County Commissioners the mm -hmm. past year and a half. Uh, tell us some of your thoughts and questions that you have for these candidates. I think what we're going to hear about these from these candidates tonight, Michael, or just what you talked about, we have covered the issues regarding State Treasurer Dale Falwell having issues with several of the county deals that he believed were done the wrong way and actually cost taxpayers more money. I expect we'll hear from the challengers. I expect we'll hear from the one incumbent who is still running tonight about those deals, about how they would address them if they're elected to council. I think we'll hear about economic development, the Highway 421 corridor, and I expect we may even hear a little bit more about uh, development, especially across the river from downtown Wilmington. My guest on the new episode of the One on One with John Evans podcast this week is Bevan Prince. Now, Bevan grew up in North Carolina. She graduated from UNCW's Film Studies program, and she played Bevan on the still wildly popular One Tree Hill TV show, which shot for nine seasons here in Wilmington. She also recently reopened her high-intensity cycling center, Recess by Bevan Prince, which you can find along Eastwood Road. That personal triumph came just months after Bevan's personal tragedy. Her husband, Will Friend, died July 3rd after being struck by lightning on Masonboro Island. This interview will be the first time Bevan speaks publicly about what happened that day, about the pain of losing her soulmate, about the friends and family who helped her regain the strength to move forward and to keep showing up. The last time Donald Trump came to Wilmington was right here at Wilmington International Airport back in 2020. He was on the ballot back then, running for a second term in the White House. Ready for a great time at another Trump rally. This time, Donald Trump is coming back as the former president of the United States, stumping for candidates running for office in 2022, namely Congressman Ted Budd who is running for one of North Carolina's seats in the U.S. Senate. Congressman David Rouser, also up for re-election, will be one of the speakers today, along with Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. But it's clear when you talk to the people who are here at Wilmington International Airport, there's one person they came to hear. We love Trump. His policies for America is for America first, not the elites. The biggest thing would be what is he going to continue to do to get our country back where it was at. What he started, hopefully he will be able to finish with a better team and be able to get us where we needed to be at. Do you want to hear that he's going to run again in 24? Yes, that would be great. That would be nice to hear today. So far, I've met people who have driven here from Virginia, from Georgia, even as far away as Texas, all coming to Wilmington to hear former President Donald Trump. At Wilmington International Airport, John Evans, WECT News. More than a half century later, their pain has still not healed. That's the message from students who planned to graduate from Williston Senior High School in 1969 and 70, but never got the chance. Instead, they became the first classes to fully integrate New Hanover County schools. 
But now those students will get the chance to graduate from their beloved Williston. A special ceremony is planned for July 1st, a legacy graduation for those alumni who, although they made history, still feel the hurt from what happened 55 years ago. District Attorney John David filed that petition just after Green took the oath of office last week, citing allegations of corruption and misconduct during Green's first term in office. Now we have team coverage of this breaking news for you tonight. WECT's Michael Pratt's heard more from the DA about what comes next for both Green and for the Sheriff's Office. Michael, the DA says even though Green resigned, this isn't the end of his legal issues. No, it's not, John. I'm John Evans of WECT News. Uh, honored that you would take the time to join us. Thank you for those of you watching at home as well on our live stream this evening for this Candidates Forum featuring uh, candidates who are running for seats in the North Carolina General Assembly, in the Senate, 7th District, and in the House, District 17, 18, and 20 are the contested races that we have on the ballot this year. John Evans, who is live in Burgaw this morning, uh, where they have all those bikes set up for you and lots of toys. I know it's early, but hopefully someone has come by and said good morning so far. Yeah, they have, Kim. Uh, I just got to say, the store manager here, Donald Thomas, and his crew have done a phenomenal job. They have all these bikes inside, four or five times as many bikes outside in the patio here of the Walmart here in Burga, and they have made it so easy. All you have to do is come, take the tag off one of the bicycles, take it right up to the front register, and pay for it there. They'll keep the bikes here today. The Salvation Army is going to come and pick up the bicycles as part of the Holiday Smiles and Weller's Wheels. Now, we have different bikes of all different sizes, but of course, they, they, people see these really cool ones for the littlest ones, and they think that these are all kind of fun. Well. Helen Brumbaugh and Clay wrote a check donating to Weller's Wheels and the Holiday Smiles toy drive. And the one thing that Fran told me as we were filling in for her today, and by the way, Fran, we're thinking about you, know you want to be here, is that, you know, a lot of times people will buy the bicycles for the youngest child, but may not remember some of the teenagers. So what we did is we took Helen and Clay's donation. We have purchased this big girl bike and what the difference was between the donation and the price of the bicycle. My good elf Sheila here and I, we have covered the difference. So we have teamed up with Helen and Clay Brumbaugh to buy the first bike here at the Burga here in at the Walmart here in Burga. So this is the first one going underneath the tree that Santa will deliver on Christmas morning. And come on, little elf Sheila, thank you. If you donate. We're going to have you sign this Get Wheel Soon card for Fran. She's under the weather, can't be here. First time in 20 years she's missing Weller's Wheels and Holiday Smiles Toy Drive. So come on, Pender County. Come on, Sampson County. Come on, Duplin County. Come down here. We're here till 8 o'clock. Buy a bike. Be a part of Weller's Wheels and Holiday Smiles Toy Drive. Sign the Get Wheel card for Fran and help make Christmas magical for a child in southeastern North Carolina.